Hi, my name is Shivant Misra, and this is my video lab report for Intro Physics 2212 at Georgia Tech. This lab investigates the magnetic field of a bar magnet. I'll first introduce some key ideas, relevant formulae, and go over my setup. I'll then show you my experimental data, calculations, data processing, and observations. After that, I'll introduce my computational model, whose link is in the description to this video, and take a look at my program's output. Finally, I'll take a look at the results and answer some key questions about the lab. As for key ideas in the lab, you need to understand that a bar magnet is a magnetic dipole and will be treated as such in this lab. You therefore need to know the magnetic field of a magnetic dipole on its axis, as well as know that magnetic fields can be superposed. This will be important as we will correct certain results by removing the interference from the Earth's magnetic field. Another key idea in this lab is computational modeling and writing code to visualize a magnetic field. Lastly, we'll need to know how to linearize data for this lab. The formulae relevant to this lab are shown below. The first two formulas describe the magnitude of the magnetic field due to a magnetic dipole, something which will be important in calculating mu, the magnetic dipole moment, of the bar magnet. The third equation has to do with the linearization of our data and will be applied in this lab, and the last equation defines approximately the magnetic field, the magnetic field of a dipole at any location, something we'll use in the computational model. Here's a look at the setup. On the left, we essentially measured the distance for different bx's and plotted this data, as we'll see in just a moment. On the right, we found the perpendicular distance needed for the magnitude of the magnetic field to be 100 microteslas, and then calculated the net magnetic field at the location shown in the diagram, which will later be compared to the results from the computational model. So here's a look at my experimental data, where I have my raw data as well as my graph of ln bx versus ln r. At the bottom, I have my net magnetic field at a location 45 degrees off axis from the dipole. Let's now use this data to perform some calculations. So here, I've set the first two equation, equations shown to the left equal to each other in order to find a symbolic solution for mu circled to the right. I then pulled data from my graph as shown in these calculations. Specifically, n is the slope of the graph and lnk is its y-intercept. I got negative 2.95 for n and k's value is shown on the left. Using these numbers, I solved for mu and got 3.206 newton meters per tesla. Of the observations shown here, only the first and fourth statements describe what I observed in my experiment. I noticed that when the magnetometer was far away from the magnet, bx was close to zero, and that when it was brought closer, bx increased as expected. So now moving on to my computational model. The first thing I did was define a function for calculating the magnetic field due to a dipole with a given magnetic dipole moment and a specified observation location. I used the formula I mentioned earlier, shown here again for reference. I then set the locations for six of the seven points where I'd be visualizing the magnetic field. Two of these points are on the dipole axis, while the other four are perpendicular to the dipole axis. After that, I drew arrows for each of those six points as shown in the code here. And lastly, I did the same but for an observation location at a 45 degree angle off axis from the dipole axis. So here's the final result, which shows the two on axis magnetic fields in orange, the four perpendicular magnetic fields in light blue, and the one 45 degree off axis magnetic field in purple. Note that the arrows are scaled proportionally to the, magnetic, to the, to the magnitude of the magnetic field they represent, as would make the most sense. And here's the text output. What we're most interested in is the second to last line, which shows the magnitude of the magnetic field at the 45 degree off axis position. Let's compare that value to the value found through direct measurement, which is bolded in the table to the left. As we can see, the two values are not exactly the same. However, given the various uncertainties and errors in measurement, the fact that they are accurate to the same order, in other words, they are both something to the power of negative five, means that we are actually fairly successful in our uh, calculations. However, we must also acknowledge that there is room for further improvement in the, of the method, which would allow us to obtain more accurate and precise data and achieve a result that is closer. And finally, to answer the questions below, if we hadn't compensated for magnetic north and laid the meter stick at any intermediate angle, our results for Bx would have all been off by a specific amount due to interference by the Earth's magnetic field. Not only this, but since the magnetic fields superpose, this would have adversely affected the magnitude of the magnetic field in the second part, leading to inaccurate results.
If we had stuck two magnets end to end, I'd expect the measurements to all be multiplied by some scalar constant. In other words, I'd expect more or less the same results, but with different numbers, as everything, including the orientation of the magnet and the relative positions, would be the same, and the only real difference would be the magnetic dipole moment. This would just be like if we replaced our magnet with a stronger magnet and repeated the experiment. Thank you for your time and have a nice day.